Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to install Apache on FreeBSD. Uh, this is six point or this is seven point oh, excuse me, a FreeBSD. Not much of a difference between the two versions. The distros are seven oh six three six two. They're pretty much the same. So when you log in the FreeBSD, this is basically the first screen you're going to see unless you remove it. And first, I'm going to do is I'm going to switch into root here. You can tell it's root basically due to the fact of the pound sign. You see here I only had the percent, here I did this. Um, of course that's another tutorial. Um, now basically I already know where in the port system, which is the port system is what I'm going or what I use to install it. Now I'm only going to show you how to get to a certain point because I've already got it installed and there's no sense to reinstall it. So what I personally do is I go to www.freebsd uh, the FreeBSD site and go to the ports database and do my searches. There are other ways, but I just don't prefer to do it that way. So, But if I did the search, it would tell me to go to user ports www apache22. Now, there is other versions of Apache. Um, there's 2.1, there's 2.0, and there's 1.3. Uh, personally, I just went with the newest version. Now, what you would do is you would do a make install clean right here. What this basically does is it makes the program, it installs it, and then it cleans out any temporary files that needed to do it. Again, because I already did it, I'm not going to do it again, but I am going to show you this. When you do do it, I'm going to use a different command to bring it up, but when you do it, it's going to bring this up. What this basically is, is this is showing you what is built. W what are you going to build with Apache 2.2.8? Um, with Apache, I really did not add any additional stuff to this. Basically, everything it had checked, I left it that way. Um, you, some people might want to uncheck things, some people might want to add things like SSL, um, CGID, depending on what you want. But once you're done, you just hit tab and then you would hit OK. But I'm going to do cancel because again, it's already done. So once that's done, it'll go through its processes. Now, a lot of tutorials I see on the internet, the first thing it wants to do is it wants to already have you start Apache. But I just think that's totally wrong because there's things that you're going to have to change and you're going to have to do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the editor that comes with um, FreeBSD EE. We're going to go to user local etc. Most files that you install the configuration files is going to be in lo user local etc whereas when you see in a Linux distribution um, you will see it just in forward slash ect so we're going to go here to Apache and the HTTP config now again I have a working system so there's the edits are going to be there but I'm going to scroll through I'm going to show you I'm going to stop at a few places and show you some changes that I personally made. Here are basically your mods, um, which I'll show you. Basically, mod will be in another tutorial that I have that I'll show you all about that uh, when it comes to PHP. First place I stop is the user and group. Basically, the user and group basically define, it tells you right here. Using group, name or number, to run as HTTPS. It is usually good practice to create a dedicated user and group for running HTTP with most system services. So user www and group www is who you would, anyone in, any or the user www or anyone in group www can start the service. Some people change that, some people don't. Right here, I have the server admin. The server admin is basically um, 
any errors, things like that, this is where the email would go. Another place that this will be displayed is going to be um, as far as if you do like a central ops lookup or you look at the domain that's running in Apache, that email address should in fact come up. Server name, basically that you want to put your domain name. Um, if you don't have a domain name and you have just a floating IP address like I have, I have a dynamic IP address for my ISP, um, basically um, you're going to put in that, which I did. So it makes it a lot easier to do things. Document root, that specifies where your files, when someone goes to your website, Apache's going to look for your index files and things like that. Next is basically, this is where when you install different type of applications, um, what exactly you're going to, you know, allow, um, you know, sometimes the directory is different, especially with Apache, it likes to install it in different places than the user local www Apache data. Okay, we're going to scroll down here some more. Next stop is here. Um, the directory index here, this tells Apache what default files to look for and in the certain order. So you basically order it depending on what type of system you have. Now because I have PHP set up on the server, I'm really not into PHP, so that's very limited. Um, Basically, I have index.htm, which of course is the new standard of um, the new standard of pages, the .htm over the .html. So, some people might have a page called default.htm. If you don't put it in here and there's none of these files, it won't load the page. So now we're going to scroll through. There are some stuff so you can change. I really don't get into them, but there are things you can make available and do. This here, this is already done for you by default. This basically tells you about CGI bin. If you enable CGI bin scripts, this is you know already set up for you. Mine types are basically when you start getting into by default, all HTML is covered. What you see here is when you install PHP, which uh, when I go through that tutorial, you'll, you'll see that. Okay, so that actually will wrap up this file here. So now that's done, you basically will save the file. And then you just do the Apache start, you know, the Apache CTL space start, which will start the server. If there are any errors, you want to go into var log HTTP. You want to go to the error log. Error log will show you any problems you have. So that will do that for you the access log that you saw will basically show you when you get access to, the, to your server via HTML. So that's going to wrap up this video. Um, if you have any problems, jump on live.jrock2004.net. Uh, I have my live stream usually going 24 hours live. Um, and I'm trying to build up the chat. You're welcome to post questions in the chat things like that. Thank you.